Hi, this is Tim Erden, author of Statistics in Plain English, and in this video we are going to take a look at SPSS output for a repeated measures ANOVA. Actually, um, this repeated measures ANOVA is more of a mixed models ANOVA because it's got a within subjects factor, which is the repeated measure, and then um, it's got a between subjects factor, which is gender, and I believe it's got uh, covariate um, or two as well. So it's kind of got a lot of different things going on. Uh, when you run the analysis, first you get descriptive statistics up here. And this gives you the means and standard deviations and ends for the different groups. So what this analysis was looking at is students' perceptions um, of the validity of a standardized test that they had to take. So what I did is I ask students um, to tell me whether they thought the test was valid that they were about to take the standardized test um, and then after they took the test I asked them again whether they thought the test was valid and then I compared um, their scores before and after taking the test in their perceptions that the test was a valid measure of their abilities and that's the within subjects repeated measure is beliefs about the validity of the test and then the between subjects is gender so I'm comparing boys and girls and here what we can see is the pretest validity that girls were a little bit lower than boys in their belief that the tests were valid and then in the post-test validity, you can see that girls' average beliefs about the validity of the test stayed the same, and that's right here. But boys' perceptions dropped a little bit from their pre-test validity beliefs. And overall, you can see um, across boys and girls, the pre-test beliefs in the validity was a little bit higher than the post-test beliefs in the validity. And here we can see we've got 571 students, um, 307 of them were girls, 264 of them were boys. So that is the descriptive statistics. And then SPSS gives us um, between subjects effects, and this is seeing whether there's a gender difference. So do boys and girls differ in their beliefs about the validity of the test? This is... Um, across both time points. So this is just looking for a gender difference um, on averaging the pre-test and post-test validity beliefs together. So not separated by time. Up here, reading test score and math test score, um, these are the covariates. So I'm wondering whether boys and girls differ in their perceptions of the validity of the test that they took or were going to take um, after controlling for their actual test scores. And as we've seen with uh, NOVA output for um, just a one-way ANOVA, you get, or, and for a factorial ANOVA, you get the sum of squares. So these are um, uh, the sum of the squares between groups for gender is 41.91. And then the sum of squares error which is right here, is going to be um, what uh, we divide by the degrees of freedom to create the mean squares. And the mean squares are the values that we plug into f to, to get the f value. So the mean squares between groups for gender is right here, 41.941. The mean squares error, 3.632. The F value for gender is 11.548. That is highly significant at P equals 0 0.001 level. And then this is the eta squared, which again is our um, um, effect size. It's basically how much variance was explained. And gender explains 2% of the variance in the overall belief in the validity of the test scores. So that's the between groups um, analysis. That's not our primary concern in a repeated measures ANOVA. 
What we're really interested in is this here. So let me take a step back. Up here where it says tests involving within subjects effects, this is what we really are interested in with our um, repeated measures ANOVA. So first, is there a main effect, a main um, within subjects effect for validity? This one right here, this row, is asking across the two genders, when you combine the two genders together, do perceptions of the validity of the test change from before they took the test to after they took the test? And what we can see here, when we look at this sig, whoops, I mean to do that. When we look at this sig of 0.001, um, that's telling us that the within subjects effect is statistically significant. Here's the F value for that, and it's highly statistically significant. This tells us that there was a difference between pre-test perceptions of validity and post-test perceptions of validity. And if we go back up here to our descriptive statistics, we can remember that the pretest validity mean was 6.07071, and the post-test validity mean was 5.8473. So there was a drop within the same people, within the same students, from pretest to post-test, their perceptions of the validity of the test declined. Um, and then the other thing that we're most interested in is this, and this is the interaction effect for pre and post test perceptions of validity by gender. And what this is asking is, is the change from the pre-test perceptions of validity to the post-test perceptions of validity, does that change look different for boys and girls? If this is a statistically significant interaction, then there was some gender difference in the change. That's what we want to know. Right here, we can see that our SIG is 0.037. That is less than 0.05, so it would be considered statistically significant. Our eta squared, 0.008, very small, so it's a very small effect size, but it's statistically significant. And so what we want to do now is figure out, all right, this is telling us that the change in perceptions of validity differed for boys and girls. Let's go back up to look at our means. And we can see that for girls, the pretest perceptions of validity and the post-test perceptions of validity were almost identical, around 5.7 to 5.75. So very little change for girls in their perceptions of the test validity. Boys, however, went from 6.285 to 6.0076, you can see that's a bit of a drop. So when we say that there is a change or there is a drop in perceptions of validity of the test scores from before taking the test to after taking the test, really what's going on here is that drop is only for boys. There wasn't really a drop for girls. And that is why we got a statistically significant interaction effect right here. So those are the main uh, results that we care about. Um, we can also see that um, these two right here are the validity by um, um, covariate interactions. And the one for reading was not significant over here. But the one for math was significant and <clears throat> saying that the change in perceptions of validity from pre-test to post-test do depend a bit on your um, math score, on how well you did on the math portion of the test. So we would have to go back in and look at the actual um, uh, relationship um, between uh, math test scores and perceptions of validity to understand this interaction. We don't get that data directly from the output, but we could go back in and look at that. My guess is going to be that the people who did better on the math test um, had less of a decline in their perceptions of validity, but that's just a guess. I'd have to actually look at the numbers. So that is how you interpret SPSS output.
for a mixed model ZANOVA with repeated measures with a between subjects factor and covariates. Hope that's helpful.